Hey, what's going on YouTube, Young Earth Creation Community? My last video got a lot of great engagement, so I felt inspired to make a part two to why I believe in a young age of the earth, science edition. In this video, I wanna give you scientific reasons for why I believe the earth is young. I wanna give reasons from geology, from paleontology, biology, even anthropology. I believe the earth is young and I believe it can be proven scientifically. I believe there are scientific reasons and explanations that best fit a young earth model. So stick around to the end of the video to get all of the information. Don't miss any of it. Okay, so let's start the video off like this. Let's start with my first scientific proof in geology, bent rock layers. Now in many mountainous areas all around the world, you have rock layers thousands of feet thick, bent and folded without fracturing. They've been bent and, and folded without fracturing. But how can that happen if they were laid down separately over hundreds of millions of years and already hardened? Try bending a slab of rock, a slab of concrete, any type of rock, try bending it, it's not gonna work. But if the concrete is still wet, it can be easily folded without breaking. The same principle applies to sedimentary rock layers. They can be bent and folded soon after the sediment is deposited, before the natural cements have a chance to bind together the particles into hard, brittle rocks. Grand Canyon is a great example of this. The canyon walls are hundreds of feet thick containing multiple rock layers. Yet somehow this whole sequence of rock layers was bent and folded without fracturing. But that's impossible if the first layer, the Tapeach sandstone, was deposited over North America 460 million years before being folded. But if it all happened during a recent global flood, those layers will still be relatively soft and pliable. You young earth creationists are so gullible. Don't you realize that heat and pressure are the results for the folded rock layers? Ignore that guy for this reason. Yes, heat and extreme pressure can most definitely soften rock, but it also transform the rock into metamorphic rock, quartzite, or marble. But that's not what the scientists found. The Tapeach sandstone is still sandstone, sedimentary rock. Only a cataclysmic event like a global flood can account for all of the massive amounts of sedimentary rock found all over the continental United States. The next reason is found in biology, soft tissue and dinosaur fossils. Now the majority of people I talk to, whether it be on college campuses, online or anywhere, believe the universe and the earth are very old. They accept this based on the prevailing view that dinosaurs died 65 million years ago and the fact that we have dinosaur fossils. But a recent discovery by Dr. Mary Schweitzer challenged this age-old assumption. Bone slices from the fossilized thigh bone of a Tyrannosaurus rex found in the Hell Creek Formation of Montana were studied under the microscope by Schweitzer. To her amazement, the bone show would appear to be blood vessels from the type seen in bone and marrow, and these contain which appear to be red blood cells with nuclei. The vessels even appear to be lined with specialized endothelial cells found in all blood vessels. So the obvious question is how can these highly biodegradable substances be left intact for millions of years. You young earth creationists never stop. What you incorrectly identify as blood vessels is actually what scientists call biofilm. Over time, bacteria tends to congregate and when the bacteria dies, it forms a slime. So what you perceive as blood vessels and nuclei, it's nothing more than dead bacteria. Again, ignore that guy. Schweitzer and co-workers found biochemical evidence for intact fragments of the protein collagen, which is the building block for connective tissue. This is important because 
collagen is a highly distinctive protein not made by bacteria. Furthermore, and the fact that these scientists found soft tissue in these animals' bones is concrete proof that these animals aren't as old as we thought they were. My next evidence comes from paleontology, living fossils. Creatures like jellyfish, horseshoe crabs, coelacanths, and many more are living proof of a recent creation. These animals were thought to have gone extinct millions of years ago, yet they're still alive today. For example, horseshoe crabs show up in the fossil record some 450 million years ago, according to old earth dating. And then they suddenly disappear for hundreds of millions of years, yet they're alive right now and they remain unchanged for allegedly millions of years. The scientific community has easily debunked this claim. It's called the Lazarus effect. The Lazarus effect does not sufficiently explain how an animal can be dead for millions of years, suddenly reanimate itself and come back to life. Instead, the fossil record shows that a global flood occurred only thousands of years ago that buried entire ecosystems. And although many of these creatures died, they did not go fully extinct. These so-called living fossils never fully went extinct. And the fact that we don't see change or the lack of change throughout the fossil record flies in the face of secular science. And last but not least, population growth. According to some old earth models and evolutionary timelines, Homo sapiens diverged from chimp-like ancestors three to six million years ago. In that case, there should be multiple billions of people alive today and many billions buried in the fossil record, but there isn't. With the world's human population now approaching eight billion, as it turns out, a biblical model of Earth being repopulated from Noah's three sons and their three wives starting about 4,500 years ago fits perfectly with the number of people living today. The evolutionary model and the old earth model falls laughably short. There should be many, many more of us alive today and many of us buried in the fossil record, but there isn't. This is utter nonsense. The reason why there's not more Homo sapiens fossils is because the process is extremely rare. You need many preconditions present for something to be fossilized. Furthermore, the recent spike in population growth in the 1800s is due to agricultural advancement and modern medicine. You make some interesting points. I agree there's certain conditions are required for something to fossilize, like a watery environment, rapid burial in mud and silt. Sounds like the preconditions of a flood. And perhaps the lack of Homo sapien fossils is due to humans fleeing to higher ground during the global flood and they were not rapidly buried in mud and silt. And even with the recent population growth since the 1800s, that does not explain the lack of population growth for millions of years of human existence. According to ICR.org, the most probable date of human origin based on all of the known data in the current population statistics is about 6,300 years ago. Their data, formulas, and equations correlate well, not only with the biblical chronology, but also with other ancient written records. The reality is we all have the same evidence, but we come with different worldviews. The question is, which worldview best explains the origin of our world? I believe it's a young earth explanation. And there's so many more reasons why I believe the earth is young, but check those links out in the description. Leave a comment in the comment section about this video like the video also subscribe to my channel if you want more content like this if you want to stay connected to what i'm doing um, i have a lot more videos coming out on various topics even more on creation and young earth my name is pastor frederick of one family church thanks for watching it to the very end peace